That is a misstatement. As, and I tried to give the example with Lament. As my, as an old colleague Carl Sagan used to say, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. And it may be that there is no need and no evidence for any supernatural phenomena in the history of the universe back to the beginning. But to claim that, you, that, that that therefore implies there's no purpose to the universe is a metaphysical statement, it's not a scientific one. And I believe scientists err when they make that statement. I mean, making the statement is fine, but claiming that they have a scientific basis for that statement is, is doing much more harm than good, in my opinion. That's one example. Um, oh, I get to pick. I keep forgetting. Um, uh, let's go to the back since your microphone is there, and we'll work our way forward. Hi, I'm, I'm Joel Schwartzman with AEI. And um, like you, I, I share your, your pain about people not believing in evolution. I'm a scientist myself by training, but I became a policy wonk. But, and I, I used to send money to the National Center for Science Education because it pained me so much. But <laughs> I stopped, and the, re the, reason, the reason I stopped was because I started to feel like, you know, as painful as it is existentially, I wonder if it doesn't really matter all that much uh, be, that, that people don't believe in evolution in, in terms of any sort of practical thing. You, you argue that it matters for our economy, our economic competitiveness, our wealth, but in fact, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't you say the observational evidence we have is just the opposite, that America is the wealthiest country on earth, we have the fastest economic growth, we, have the, we, have, we develop most of the technological innovations in the world, even with a population where most people uh, don't believe in evolution and, and, where the, and where people don't know that the earth orbits the sun. Uh, and that, that the fact that, that uh, people are, are ignorant, uh, isn't, many people are ignorant, doesn't, doesn't really affect the fact that we're able to generate wealth and create nice, good lives for ourselves. Okay, well, no, that's a valid point, actually, I think. And, and there, are, there are a few responses that I'd make. Um, first of all, as long as we, it, it is a true statement that if we have the best graduate schools in the world, and we can, and the United States, let's face, has relied, our economy has relied on importing the best minds in the world and keeping some fraction of them here. Okay, some fraction go abroad. And as long as we can continue to do that, you're absolutely right. The question is when do we stop being competitive in that regard? And that's, that's of some concern to a number of us. If you look at for, uh, the number of grad, foreign graduate students that are applying to American universities, in some sense, that certainly went down after September 11th because we didn't let them in. Uh, but it, it, that's been declining. The ability, so, so the ability to compete at the highest levels is of some concern. But then there's the other pro problem. I mean, you can, it's true, we can have a permanent underclass in this in this country and, be, and, and maybe be fine. But at some level, it seems to me, if the future involves technology and high technology, and I happen to believe it does, the future economic health, those countries that invest in technology are going to be the economic leaders in, in the 21st century, I would argue. I think it's imperative to have a workforce that can handle that technology. And therefore, I think we owe it um, to ourselves and our children to do the best possible job we can educating them. I, I mean, I also recognize my bias. I'm an educator, and there's an old statement that if the only tool you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And it's true. But I happen to think the solution to most things is education. But I don't see how we can, how we can argue that we are a great nation if we don't educate our people. And if we openly give up. I, I, you know, you're right. It's, uh, at the end, we're going to have, there's going to be a group of people that are going to be really good, and there are going to be a group of people that are really rich, and it's going to be, you know, and it's not going to be that different than it is now. But uh, it seems to me, if we really believe in what we're talking about, we owe it to our population to educate them. And moreover, just like we owe it to make them literate. I mean, what's the point of teaching them Shakespeare? I mean, that always amazes me. No one questions the need or, or the value of art or music or literature. Well, yeah, you're right. In fact, probably they do. They don't want to fund it. But, uh, but science to me is just like art, music, and literature. It's a basic part of what makes us a civilized species. And some of these, and these ideas are the most am amazing ideas that humans have ever come up with. And it is sad to think that we would not want to convey those ideas and, and in fact, enhance our culture. So I guess that my argument is cultural rather than economic. Should I? Okay, one more there and then we'll come up here. Michael, we're back at AEI. Um, I think I agree with virtually everything you were intending to do, 
but I thought you made seven or eight very bad steps. That, that Only made, seven or eight? I thought you'd think more. Well, okay. it's, it's, I'm trying not to take too much time. Okay. Um, <laughs> that uh, that uh, really make your talk quite unpersuasive, and I think would to many, many audiences. First point is, I think the structure of your talk was essentially political. Economic benefit is the country, and you want to persuade the federal government and the American people to give more money to science for their own benefit. Th that's the way you structured it. Okay, but it is a political argument, not a scientific one. Uh, second, you began early by pointing out that uh, half the American people don't believe a funda one fundamental part of scientific uh, findings about uh, evolution, about the age of the Earth and about human beings and so forth. And that seems odd to me because uh, certainly that's the only theory taught in the schools, from high school through mm -hmm. college to university and so forth. So what is it about the way science is being presented that's just not persuading a lot of people? Oh. I think that's, this follows on the question I asked just a minute ago. What is it that's off-putting? And here, let me make two or three suggestions and quit. Um, one is you say scientists, science is essentially anti-authoritarian, but that's simply not true. We are constantly in the, we constantly have the need to defer to authorities in one science after another, which we simply don't have the time or energy to master. And you can't ask intelligent questions about materials that are way over your head. And you know, I mean, that's, uh, I'm trying to think. I should make notes to, to answer all your questions. Well, I, you know, it's not going to be necessary. But uh, let, let me let me uh, conclude on these notes. I think science scientists need to suggest what it is they're offering as a theory, I don't think it's really a matter of science, but nonetheless, scientists have a duty to do this. What is it that you tell the 50% of the people that don't believe in your most important finding here um, gives meaning to their lives? And what is it you tell them that makes them believe that what you say are the fundamental values of science, honesty and creativity, have any meaning? Why not be dishonest? Why not be destructive in a world without meaning? And, and in other words, I think science is trying to do too much. It's trying to present itself implicitly, steadily, as a whole view of life, and it's just not. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm gone on too long. Okay, well, uh, well, you obviously had a lot of problems. So let me let me um, let me let me address a few of the things you, you talked about. Um, I certainly didn't give mean to give the. I, I began with economics. I don't think I ended with economics. I think I made the point that the economic argument is not the key argument. Um, I began with economics because of this particular forum. I think it's important to realize that, that we, we need to spend money on fundamental research, and science is, is a vital part of the economy. But I didn't, but that was not the thrust of my talk. The thrust of my talk is that we have to begin to utilize science for, to make sensible pu public policy. And it is true that most people don't have the filters necessary to criticize experts, perhaps. But I tried to pick examples and utilize um, a, a principle that I learned from the publisher of the New York Times, who said, I like to keep an open mind, but not so open that my brains fall out. I think most people, and I'm convinced that if you give a, a very simple set of arguments, most people, if presented with the, with the basic data, will make reasonable conclusions. I didn't present, I mean, the, the, maybe the global warming thing, which I, the reason I kept out was maybe the most sophisticated of those arguments. But, but the argument on missile defense is that you don't need to be a rocket scientist, forgive the pun, to, 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 to recognize that you shouldn't deploy a system that doesn't work. But what if it worked politically? What if it really worked politically and You know, you can make that argument. But if you make the argument, you should make that argument. I mean, the, I, I've always, I, I think, and I think you would agree with me here, from a moral perspective, I think you have an obligation to explain why you're doing what you're doing in a democracy. Maybe I would hope you would agree with that. Uh, and an ethical perspective, if not a moral one. Um, and, and then let me get back to the problem that science has. And, I, and I, you really hit it. And I think the problem it has is, and, and that's why I had this nice quote from Einstein about mystery. Too often, you're right, science does not provide meaning for people or awe or a sense of wonder. And we do too poor a job of explaining it. Science is presented 